Hey everyone, welcome back to the I Should Totally Be Dead Right Now podcast, where we tell true stories of survivors of true crime, natural disasters, and everything else in between. How's it going, Michelle? Good. That yeah. was like hella sober sounding. Thank you. Maybe I'm just jelly. Maybe. I, I think you're a little more sober. I think I am. I... <laughs> yeah. I I like Bloody Marys more than you do, I think. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> this is so we're just getting right into it. Our drink of this week is Bloody Marys. And I've never been a fan of them. I've no. never been a fan. She took one for the team this week. But today, I actually enjoy it. It's actually good. But it's not something I can, like, just chug. It's a sipper for me. Yeah, mine's gone. <laughs> I've, like, refilled mine with beer. Yeah. And again, I'm ready to do some shots. <laughs> I'm ready to rock and roll. It's fucking Saturday morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Caitlin's taken about... Oh, yeah. you drink about a third yeah. of it. Look at yeah. you go. Thank you. Well, and we made it with... Uh, Arby's crinkle cut French fry vodka. Yeah. And if you want to see me trying it on videos on our Instagram and Facebook, oh, alone, <laughs> alone, it's so bad. It's like sweet and strong and like it tastes bad, guys. I feel like I'm going to watch the video of you taking that shot maybe more times than is healthy. I literally thought I was going to throw up on the camera and I was afraid <laughs> we that we'd have to film it again. No, your face is priceless and yeah. have to take another shot. Yeah, no, there's just no way. Are so. you kidding me? We would we would keep you throwing up. Yeah, in maybe. It, like, yeah. Just next to you. <laughs> but in the Bloody Mary, in the Bloody it's Mary. not so bad. It does. So we have a spicy mix. So the Bloody Marys are super spicy, but the, the vodka gives it a bit of a sweet like kick yeah. at the end of it yeah it's interesting um but it's really good actually with the vodka and um, it actually tastes a lot like pretty much a normal bloody Mary. Yeah, yeah i don't feel like i can get a lot of french fried notes right <laughs> agreed yeah but it works in no. a bloody mary i can't yeah. think of any yeah. other drink it would work in no and mary. in fact i tried to look up recipes and could find none other than a bloody mary yeah so michelle what's in it you made it it was oh. really good so. Yeah, okay. Well, it's just made essentially just like a regular Bloody Mary. So we had a nice tall glass full of ice. We added two ounces of that mm-hmm. delightful Arby's <laughs> <laughs> French fry vodka or regular vodka if you've got it. Uh, we filled the glass with our yummy Bloody Mary mix, mm-hmm. which was, what, what was the name of it? Was it was like Portland, Portland something or other? Yeah, spicy. Anyway, Bloody it's delicious. Mary. It was really good. <laughs> Yeah. So, and then we added all the fun accoutrement that comes <laughs> with the Bloody Marys. Yeah. We've got uh, pickled garlic. We've got olives, celery, obviously, some pickled green beans. We didn't have any chicken wings or bacon slices no. to slice in, to put in at this time, but. But what you put in the. Oh, of course. We added a little Worcestershire uh, sauce, a little uh, squeeze of lemon, and then I have this like pico de gallo seasoning mm-hmm. that i use in all my cooking like ask anyone it's like what are you putting in that spaghetti pico de gallo seasoning <laughs> okay i get it on amazon and i love it it's like chilies and salt oh and so you can probably create your sort of your own maybe a little cayenne and salt or mm-hmm. chili powder and salt or something like that but yeah uh, i added just a little sprinkle of that to you know yeah give it some pop <laughs> it's very tasty so if you're a bloody uh mary fan I mean, if you want to try Arby's vodka, go Maybe for don't, it. Maybe don't, yeah, but... I mean... <laughs> no, yeah. it's... Just it's... not for shots, for mixing. Not for, for shots. Mixing. Forget it. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it, or what? Yeah, are you going to kick us off I with am. your kick-ass story? We'll see. You know. We'll see. Okay. 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 Yeah. So this story is about Brie Lastly. Okay. So it is September 23rd, 2015, in the evening in Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, I'm trying to imagine it's probably still warm out in September. September probably. And, yeah, mm-hmm. maybe a little Indian summer going on. Who knows? Okay, yeah. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> sure. I wish you wouldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> so Brie is sitting on her bed listening to music, vibing, you know, feeling herself. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, okay, that's how <laughs> I mean like Wow, okay. Anyways, she <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I know. I know what you mean. I'm Thank always you. like listening to music. Yeah. Like, if I'm alone, I usually never watch TV. Yeah. I'm always listening to music oh, and just yeah. puttering around the house. It's like one of my favorite things yeah. to do. So something caught her attention. She thought she heard a voice or something, but mm. so she turned off her music. 
and was looking around. So she just, you know, waved it off. Yeah. It. And then she went to the restroom and she came back into her room. Mm. But then she could hear the voice again. And this time it was more distinct. And it said, hey, girl, I'm coming in. What? Yeah. All of a sudden, a man is now crawling into her room. <gasps> and Brie quickly gets off her bed and tries to push him out the window. That it, would be terrifying. Right? Yes. So she tried to push him out the window, but he it failed. And this six foot two man is now towering over Brie. Like in her room. In her room, oh. yep. She offered him her phone and laptop, hoping he was just breaking in to rob them. Oh. Uh, but she states, when he didn't take it, I knew I was in for a long night. <gasps> I know, right? That sounds awful. So Bree's younger sister, Kaylee, she's actually in the home, and she hears yelling and commotion. So she gets out of bed, runs into her sister's room, and sees this man. What time uh, is this again? It's at night. It didn't mm. give us a specific oh, that's right. time. That's right. Okay. And so when she sees a man in there, like, fighting with her sister, she begins to jump in and try to push him out the window. Oh. All right. But now the man is just throwing punches. He oh, holds gosh. Brie against the wall, punching her in the stomach, and both of these girls are just fighting back as much as they can. Oh, my God. And this fight actually moves into the kitchen. So from her room, it moves into the kitchen, trying to get away. Ugh. But, kind of like your house, in the kitchen, there's a door to the basement. Oh, okay. So, with the basement door open, the man actually kicks Kaylee down the stairs into the basement. I'm like, oh no! And right after that, the man and Bree actually are tumbling down the stairs as well, just continuing to fight. fight. Yep. Bree's holding her own, is what I like to think. So Brie is now trying to call 911 and she's trying to use like Siri, like Siri, call 911, you know. Oh, I see. Because she can't get to her phone. Oh my God, um, I have my Siri deactivated. Well, Siri didn't understand. So <sighs> Siri. I know. With the man on top of her, punching her, uh, oh. she was able to dial 911 on the keypad. And let's hear it. I have. The, oh, you have the 911 call. I do. Yes. What key do you want? What is the address of the emergency? What do you want? Hello? kind of hard to hear what she was saying yeah was she, she was saying asking... the address she was saying the address oh was she because mm-hmm. I, I heard like what do you want well yeah she did and... say that but she also like yelled the address and then the, that was the 911 operator probably trying to call her back yeah mm-hmm. oh, okay mm-hmm. i was so... like did they put her on hold i don't understand well no because well she couldn't have put the phone to her ear yeah so she's, she's just, just yelling. yelling yeah so she's yelling at him trying to yell at the address oh. what it was I even imagine no being a 911 dispatcher oh no like, well actually i think it'd be pretty good you probably would be pretty good <laughs> i mean you're already an advocate you've right. already you know you kind of deal with people in very stressful situations already yeah. whereas me i'd be like crying and <laughs> i'm driving there myself like oh god yeah. no i'm i'm sure there's a lot that uh that would hit me for no, sure. I'm sure but so the fight lasted around 8 minutes Gosh. and the man moved his attention to Kylie when she started uh like she was still Pushing him off of her sister. Like, they're both at they're it, you just know? fighting. But he pulls his attention to her and starts strangling her. Oh, my gosh. So, Brie tackled him, and then he put his attention back on Brie because she was, I think, doing more of the damn. I mean, yeah. it's her, it's Hopefully her sister. Hopefully his eyeballs out yeah. and doing all kinds of damage to him. Yeah. So, when he was now back with Brie, Kylie found uh, a metal object and just started beating him with it. I'm sure whatever was laying right there. Yeah. I mean, this guy, (laughs) what? Absolutely. But now this time the man brings out a knife. Brie urges her sister to run outside for help since police have not arrived yet and they needed to act fast. They actually called 911 three more times. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. She says, as she's watching her sister walk up the stairs, like, run up the stairs, 
She thought it was the last time she was going to see her sister. I know, right? And then as she, Kylie's leaving, Bree's screaming, he's stabbing me, he's stabbing me. Oh my god. The man stabs Bree into her stomach near her ribs and also is stabbing her legs. So he is just continuously stabbing her. I'm amazed when you hear like, they had 60 stab wounds and they're still alive. Yeah, right? It's incredible to me. So Kylie, again, called 911 three more times. And then she's running outside screaming, like trying to get someone's attention. And actually an off-duty police officer, it, she, spa- she flagged him down. Yeah. She flags down Officer Ben Hone and, you know, telling this guy. Is, like, he just came into our window yeah, and started exactly. attacking. So, Bree's fighting with him in the basement. Yeah. Yep. As Bree is now holding off the knife to her throat, she hears Salt Lake City police drop the knife. Ugh. He yelled at the man three more times to drop the knife. Bree's cheek was pressed against the man's cheek, like, up against, so it was, they were really close in contact. But then Ben finds his shot and fires. Oh. The, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like, oh, my God. The bullet hits the man straight in the head, instantly killing him. Ugh. Uh, Bree thought that this was from all the 911 calls, but she found out that her 911 calls were unanswered. They didn't send anyone. What? Yeah. They didn't send anyone. Our stupid answering machine when I was growing up would yeah. randomly call 911 when it was running out batteries, and they still sent someone. Yeah. No. Nope. And that's very upsetting. I know. Hear. Well, that, that is very upsetting to well, hear. Well, this news traumatized her. So as her stab wounds were healing, uh, there was also a lot of emotional and uh, trauma that she was dealing with. Clearly. She would sleep on her parents' couch during the day and would have her brother or father sleep next to her on the different couches or stay with, Aww, stay awake with her at night. Poor thing. She couldn't work for six months. She, she Pretty much her independence was just stripped from her. She, Because yeah. she didn't know how to defend herself. Well, and this guy came out of nowhere in yeah. her safe space. Yeah, exactly. It took a long time for her to be able to go sleep back into her room. Oh, I imagine. So, oh my gosh. But she is still shaken that the dispatch system failed her. She states, I think about all the seconds and all the minutes that we're fighting that we could have had help. That we should have had help, but we didn't. And <sighs> if she, and, and if Kaylee didn't find that off-duty police officer, I mean... She'd probably be probably dead. Probably be dead. Absolutely. She was on the verge of being dead. Yeah. Well, Bree uh, is actually suing Salt Lake City uh, base priority dispatch for the negligence, arguing it failed in its duty to provide effective software to emergency dispatchers. Uh, Bree hopes her lawsuit will bring about change uh, that dis- that dispatchers centers uh, will overhaul their protocols and train their workers differently. So what they were saying is that this type of dispatch thing when they called like you you couldn't move on until they answered one question it sounded like that's what i got from Mm. it so you like what's your emergency and you would type it in and we go to the next question like you would have to answer these questions say what the emergency was so she couldn't move on is that well she knew what the emergency was but the system wouldn't let her so she heard the address well they're saying they couldn't hear the address but still like if you know the address or hear the address You should be able just to type it in and have someone go. But you have to do all these protocol questions first before Wow. Something like that. That's that's what I got from it. That sounds super scary. Right? So the man, we'll talk about him. Oh yes. Was forty eight year old Robert Berger. Robert, he was released from Utah's state prison eight days prior to this attack and he was in prison for fourteen years previously. So he walked away from a halfway house. Uh, and a warrant was issued for him a day before the attack happened. Oh, so he kind of ran away. Yeah. Obviously looking for maybe some more crime to do. Well, actually, so before he went into Bree's house, he actually broke into another couple's house. Again, he said that he was coming in and was climbing through the window, and the lady was just like, uh, what? no. And her, I think her husband was there as well, but she grabbed a lamp and like, like hit him, pushed him out the window. And then they called the police, but he was gone by the time Mm. police got there. I would think the police would be like, we're on high alert for someone who's breaking into random people's bedrooms. Yeah, right? And then he just went to Breeze next and did the same thing. So I don't know what his, like, what? 
his motive was it was probably just pure mental illness or maybe, something. And maybe. Just, like, I gotta go and F some people up. Probably. Uh-huh. That's so sad. But Brie, I mean, talk about wrong place, wrong time, and then you're in your house. You're in yeah. your room. That Terrible. is the scariest thing. It's like, you know, when your home is robbed or yeah. anything, it's like that sense of security that you have is just shattered. Absolutely. And it's hard to go back. Yeah. I mean, I remember my mom's house got robbed. Yeah. I mean, technically, it was my house, but... Right. You know, it was still, it, I mean, it affected me. Yeah. And it's like, I wasn't even part of it. You right. Know, it was just someone I knew was part of it. it no, because that happened like two days after I watched the house. Yes. So I was like, right. it kind of affected me because I was just like. Were people watching me right. this whole time? Were that's they what... planning already? Yeah. Could I have been home when this happened? Yeah. It's super scary. It's super scary. All right. Sorry. Uh, so Brie is seeking more than $300,000 in damages to compensate in part for her physical, emotional pain, medical costs, and plus diminished job earnings and quality of life. She states, I'm still here. I'm standing. It's a little empowering, but it's terrifying too. Yeah. So that was 2015. Uh, still in 2018, it still hasn't come to fruition. Like, oh, I still... I can't working. find any results of her case yet. Mm. I mean, of her lawsuit. Well, it still could so be going on. I mean... It could be, it's, yeah. Some of the, sometimes these things take years. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And it's super sad that... Uh, terrifying. Yeah, it is terrifying. Poor thing. But I'm glad that she's okay. And I think... Uh, I think having her sister there, I think, kind of empowered her more to fight. Just keep fighting. Just fight, fight, fight. She said one point she gave up. But mm. then seeing her sister, she's just like, and then something inside of her told her, just you gotta fight. keep going. And she did. I will say, like, any time that I've been, I mean, obviously I've never been in a stressful situation like this. Right. This is ex- very extreme. But any time, like, I see, or in my past, I would see, my sister or brother get yelled at or right. you know whatever that's when i would rise up and be like now i have to fight right it's like i would never defend myself or anything yeah. it was always now i have to defend my sister or my brother so mm-hmm. now i will yeah and and so i could see how she would really be ready to fight back mm-hmm. when seeing her sister is now involved right it's yeah like, uh-uh you ain't getting my sister right i will kill you first absolutely oh yeah uh so yeah. Good job. I know. I mean, man. did exactly what you need to. Found help. Yeah. No, absolutely. That it's just sucks. sad that you feel like, I don't know. Well, there is a safety net in 911. And yeah. And we've been taught that someone will come yeah, every exactly. single time yeah. and call. be able to help you. I mean, people like, yeah, like you said, call, hang up, and people still come. Yeah. So I don't know what. What Maybe because there? it was a cell phone. Maybe I guess the so. Yeah, because ours was always a landline. But when you um, listen to the nine one one call, I don't know if you could hear it, but sometimes you could clearly hear the address mm. of one of the nine one one calls they did. I think I would have to listen again. I did not, yeah. but I was not listening for it either. Right. So you're just listening. But they survived. I mean, I mean, again, their wounds will be. Did long, they say how many stab wounds she ended she, up with? They didn't say how many. Like altogether. thirty-eight. It seems like it's a lot. Whatever it was, it I'm was more sure. than one. It was more than one, absolutely. I think yeah, one is it's enough. definitely one is plenty. More than enough. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, all right, Michelle, what do you got? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to tell my story now. It sounds just stupid. <laughs> no. no, mine was going to be a personal survival story. Oh, okay. Here's the situation, Caitlin. Okay. And let me preface this with: it's not that serious, and it's not really a survival story. Oh my god. <laughs> But me. Okay. here we go. All right. It's gotten warmer in Oregon, as you know. Okay. And so the evenings, you know, maybe you want a little fresh air. Uh-huh. And so I opened up our bedroom window okay. in, throughout the night yeah. just to let, you know, fresh air in. And because we had the AC in, we don't currently have a, a screen on that window. And so the next morning I wake up and I'm getting dressed and I look up and there's the biggest fucking spider I've ever seen (laughs) in my whole life. I don't know if you recall the spider that I thought I was going to have to burn my apartment to the ground. Yes, I do. It was bigger than that motherfucking spider. So I calmly go into the other room and I was like, Joel, there is a spider in our bedroom. That's the biggest fucking spider I've ever seen. Uh Can you go take care of it? 
And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, what the fuck am I going to have to do? I'm yeah. going to have to go deal with this spider myself. So I go back into her bedroom and now it has gone from right above my side of the bed uh-huh. over to Joel's side of the bed. Oh, okay. So I'm like, fuck it. Let Joel deal with this. But now the spiders disappeared. Oh. So I have been living in terror for over a week. And I will tell you, I wake up numerous times in the night looking at the ceiling and all the walls just to make sure that the biggest fucking spider ever is not lingering. Mm -hmm. And now I'm worried about going into my closet because it's probably hanging out in my clothes. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the fuck this spider is. But anyway, I've been living in terror for some time. Okay. So obviously my story is about a spider bite. So that's where we are. Okay. You know what? Nick probably would, he would not go. He was like, you have to find it. I will not sleep in that room. Well, he's like, just go vacuum it up. And I was like, it won't fit in the fucking vacuum. It it literally. Really? Yeah. No, with its, I wish I had taken a picture of it because yeah. it's the most terrifying spider I've ever seen. And it probably is completely not going to bite humans. Yeah. And it's probably eating up every bad bug we have in our house. Well, yeah, or... because if you don't have like a, a screen on your window, I mean, bugs are going to fly yeah, in. Yeah, and they're probably flying right into his giant jaws. <laughs> Oh, but literally, this spider was bigger than the tube of our vacuum. And so yeah. I was like, there's no way it's going to like clunk down into the vacuum. Forget it. All right, let's hear it. So spider bites can be really serious. As I found out, yes, indeed, they can. <laughs> okay. um, so just know that even now I'm still living in terror right. of this stupid spider. I can't wait to hear the oh. follow up so. when you find it. I probably never will find it. Probably gone forever, living in our bedroom. Yeah, there you go. Maybe your dog ate it. Oh my God. Joel said I ate it. He's like, you probably ate it in your sleep. And I was like, are you kidding me? It'd be like clunk, like this giant thing in your mouth and like crunk, crunk, crunk. No, you're not going to actually. Just choke on a spider? Ugh. 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 I'm going to throw up just like you almost threw up that vodka. Uh. <laughs> so this story is about Henry Moffat. Okay. I'm most likely sure. Like, oh my gosh, okay. It took me a little while because it's like, as told by later, oh, someone named Louisa, but I think it's like the, that's the person who wrote the article. Oh, okay. So, because it was a, it's all in first person, so uh-huh. it's kind of hard to distinguish. So I did a little more research. I'm pretty sure it's Henry Moffat okay. that this happened to. All right. So this is back in October of 2012. Okay. Henry and a friend of his, or a few friends of his, were all hanging out watching football. One okay. afternoon. Yeah. And there were in London. So I'm assuming by football, they mean soccer. Oh, probably. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not the NFL that we know and love here. Yeah. Actually, I hate the NFL. Whatever. You don't need to get into it. <laughs> but so anyway, during the second half of this football game, he decided to help himself to a banana from a fruit bowl. And he felt a pinch on his left hand. <laughs> But didn't really see anything or kind of mm-hmm. know, you know, he's like, whatever. I yeah. Think. Sort of disregarded it. But then later, his left hand sort of started becoming a little more stiff. Mm. And he showed his friend that he had this bizarre black dot with a white ring around it on his hand, but no one knew what to make of it. And they're like, mm. wow, that is really weird. So he started feeling a little more under the weather and started feeling a little peaky as he likes to say (laughs) so he ended up going back to his own apartment okay he took a cab and as soon as he got to his apartment it felt as if he had the flu oh my gosh yeah it was just like just not feeling well so he just immediately went to bed he's just like ugh, i feel like crap i'm gonna Uh go lay down so his his housemate his roommate was there in the apartment watching a movie Mm -hmm. and he heard Henry starting to scream <gasps> in his sleep. Oh, my gosh. And he's just like, what the hell? So he heard him through the wall and kind of assumed that he would stop soon and popped his earphones on so he could just... He would stop <laughs> screaming? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to finish my movie. Oh. He'll, he'll probably stop screaming in his dreams soon. What? Okay. So he watched the entire film okay. with his headphones on. And so he pulled off his headphones at the end credits uh-huh. of the movie and he could still hear him, Henry, shrieking oh my and, gosh. in his room. So his friend Travis decided to go in and check on him. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, finally. <laughs> yes, thank you. 
Travis is knocking and knocking and not receiving any response. And so finally he kicked in the door. Oh, it was locked. Yeah, it was oh, a locked wow. door. And, you know, Henry is not, he's shrieking and shrieking, but yeah. not responding to Travis. Oh my gosh. So he kicked down the door and what he found was Henry was completely white. He uh-huh. was sweating. He was screeching. He was clasping his left hand, which had turned completely red <gasps> and had swelled up. So it looked like a big sort of comical foam hand. Oh my god! Much bigger than kind of it normally should be. So Travis was like, "We're going to the hospital." Yeah. So he bundled him up, put him but in. He a was taxi. awake or he was sleeping. He was. I don't think Travis was really aware of anything that was oh, going on. Wow. So he's all this is happening sort of in this fever dream that okay. he's having. Okay. So he bundled him up put him into a taxi and sent him to the nearest hospital. So wait, Travis didn't go with him. They, he put him in a taxi and said, take him to the hospital. Yeah. I didn't really say whether he went with or not, but (laughs) he bundled him up and put him in a taxi. Okay. Okay. So he gets to the hospital Uh and the nurse, uh, takes his temperature and he can tell by her reaction that it's not good. Oh, cause her eyes get all wide with horror and, (laughs) It, and then he's being rushed into an ambulance and then seen by the tropical diseases team. Oh, so they transfer him right away. Yeah. They were like, uh-uh, this isn't good. So at this point now he's conscious in the ambulance. Okay. And they're heading to this other hospital. Yeah. And he's got, he's you know, asking all these questions. But by the time they arrived, he was back out, kind of unconscious wow. again. And so he had gone into what was called... I apologize. Okay. Hyperparexia. Oh, okay. That sounds which good. is an extreme elevation of the core body temperature. So oh. he was, you know, normally your body temperature is 98.6. Yeah. His was 109. What? It 109? Was the highest temperature that did not result in death, like ever Whoa. recorded. I know. Last story, I had the lowest temperature yeah. ever recorded, and now we have the highest temperature Holy ever recorded. Holy cow. 109. 109. Yeah, I mean, they say if you're at over 105 for more than too yeah. long, you're going to end up with brain damage and can, can result in death. I mean, this is four degrees over that. So he ended up regaining consciousness after he had had an emergency operation. So he they took him back and immediately opened up the wound on his hand uh-huh. to clean it and to assess the damage. Okay. And at this point, his arm is almost black. <gasps> And there's track marks that snaked towards his shoulders, like, from the bite. Oh, my gosh. So, later he found out that that was the potent venom of a female recluse spider. (gasps) Brown recluse. Oh. Which, of course, we're all, like, super scared of. But it turns out there's no brown recluses in Oregon. Really? Yeah, that's what everyone, everyone's super scared, but then they say there's none. I thought there were. Maybe not. They say there's not in Oregon. This is mostly a Midwest thing. I know we have a hobo spiders. Yeah, hobo spider, and I think we have black widows here as well. We have black widows, well. yeah. And actually, it turns out the brown, the brown recluse is a cousin to the black widow, which I didn't oh, know. Oh, I didn't know that either. And so all these streaks going up his arm was the venom spreading, wow. of course. And so he was pumped with all kinds of antibiotics, and he got a drip because at that point, they didn't realize it was a spider bite. Oh. So they're just, like, trying to get... They're just sort of trying to figure out what happened, what happened. And you're just getting antibiotics or whatever, because we think there's an infection, but we don't necessarily know it's a spider bite yet. The reason they didn't know it was a spider bite is because that telltale sign that he had before, which was the black mark with Uh the white ring around it, when they were cleaning the wound, all that got removed. Oh. And so all they saw was sort of this open wound and they couldn't figure out what was going on. But if I they had see. Probably, and it was probably due to all the swelling and, you know, the emergency of his situation. Yeah. Um, they didn't get a chance to really look at it closely before they cleaned it all out. Wow. Otherwise, they probably would have been able to tell. Right. Okay. Earlier. Okay. All right. So Henry had both, I apologize, <laughs> germonocrotic and systematic reaction, meaning that not only the venom had killed off the skin and tissue, but also his organs were starting to shut oh down. Oh my gosh. And in addition to that, his blood had thickened. Mm. So yeah, I guess that's a very rare, but it can be very fatal. Right. So I'm not even fully sure what that all means, but... 
What it meant for him was that the doctors were constantly putting him back under for surgery, and then they would go back to his hand and cut away more flesh and more flesh to try to stop the venom and the necrosis, which, of course, is the death of tissue cells, okay. from spreading any further. Okay. You know, so his whole arm is looking bad. Not good. Yeah. They're going back to that same wound and just going and taking away more and more of the Ugh. flesh there. Uh, they were also trying to work out what the venom was. At this point, they're not even fully sure it's a spider bite. They're not, you know, they don't know what's going on. I'm sure at this point they're realizing that it is, in fact, a spider bite. But what kind of spider? Right. I mean, he never saw it. He right. never, he just felt that pinch. And so, and all the while they're pumping him up with all kinds of drugs to yeah. try to bring that temperature down. Mm. You know, because again, it was at 109. Yeah. So he was in the hospital for about two weeks at this point, And the doctor recommended he needed to amputate his arm. Yeah. And so up, he, they needed to amputate it at the elbow. The elbow oh. and down. Okay. Because they were concerned about the risk of the necrosis spreading to his heart. Absolutely. And, you know, because then it's going to start killing all the tissues in your heart. Oh, my and, gosh. You know, that's uh. not good. So he said, though, he was adamant he would rather die. What? And lose his arm. What? Yeah. And so later he realized that he probably could have lived without yeah. the one arm, but at the time he just couldn't even imagine. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, just like, I mean, nope. he has a fever of 109. I'm sure he's not thinking correctly. Well, exactly. He said he was tired. He was confused. He was on a yeah. ton of morphine. You know, he's just like, forget it. Yeah. Kill me first before you take my arm. Oh. So he underwent four operations in four weeks. And the doctor said that they were grueling procedures. So his body had started to combat the necrosis, which meant he ended up not actually having to lose his arm. So oh, even okay, though the okay. doctor was like, we better just take it. Yeah. And he was just like, kill me first. I would rather die. And they're like, no, it turns out you might be able to keep it. Okay. So, well, um, all right. That's lucky. Yeah, it was lucky for him because he very clearly could have died. So he um, ended up with a skin graft from his thigh to replace the tissue on his arm. And he said that was the worst part of the entire experience. It was so extremely painful. Oh. You know, like the skin has just been peeled from one other part of your body to a different part of your body. Yeah, I get, it yeah. Just, it seems like that'd be super painful and awful. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. So they didn't find out about the spider until three weeks later. What? Yeah. He didn't and say, like, I think it was a spider bite? He didn't know at that point. Oh. No one knew I guess at that's that true. Point. He didn't see it, so, okay, fair, no, fair, they, fair. No, they, I mean, like, he saw the, the, white, the black dot with the white ring around it, but he didn't understand what that meant. Right. And, and then by the time, of course, they had completely scraped it away and... You yeah, know, he's okay. in his own level of torment. That's true. So it was only confirmed by the hospital after they had ruled out all the other options and cross referenced photographs of the bite uh -huh. when he had been first taken to the hospital. Okay. So they were like trying to figure out this whole time. So when they did find it out, when they did find out, <laughs> he had the whole place. So his friend, whose house this happened at, yeah. had his whole place fumigated. And then ended up moving out two months later. Really? Yeah, he's just like, I fucking get it. That's how I am in my current spider situation. I guess. Uh, Do I, I need to move out? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I don't know. I have no. Yeah. Mm, he had many things that he, his friend just couldn't cope with the anxiety of knowing that this brown recluse spider was in his knows, house. In his house. In the banana. In the banana. Bananas are the worst. That's why you don't buy them. So. Yeah, she hates bananas. Yep. True story. Yep. So the skin graft ended up taking well, and after waiting six months for it to fully heal, he was able to start physiotherapy. Okay. His hand had been immobile uh, pretty much this oh, entire sure. time. And so he had lost so much muscles that even like just barely twitching his fingers was uh -huh. agony. Oh my gosh. Him. And so after a year, he got most of the dexterity back to his oh, hand. Oh, okay. A um, year. But even now in, you know, 2020 or 2022, he can't feel the back of his left hand. Really? It's like completely numb. Holy cow. So he never got to see the spider that bit him. And he still doesn't know how it got into the, the fruit bowl because they're native to North America. And of course, they're in London, you know, so... 
we oh, have them over here. They don't right, have them over there. Oh my gosh. Um, he was never scared of spiders before, but now after seeing a photo of what a brown recluse looks like, uh-huh. he's like, I'm never going to reach into a fruit bowl without looking first again. That's insane. So, he almost died, and that is what I'm worried is going to happen to me. Well, you know, it's not a brown... Isn't, aren't they small? Isn't brown recluses, like, pretty small? Well, good question, Caitlin. Thank you. Because I was doing quite a bit of research oh. while we were... Uh, while you were almost throwing up on your... <laughs> uh, the French fry vodka. Yeah. Uh, I was doing some brown recluse research. Okay. okay. Uh, a couple of the questions about them. Do they jump? Oh, no. no. I don't. Only jumping spiders jump, right? Yeah. They will usually... lunge forward to get away from people. Oh, interesting. And so apparently they're pretty scared of people. They hang out in unused spaces. Oh. So if you've got like a closet that you don't go into very often or you've got like a pile of laundry on the floor that yeah. you don't, it's been there for a long time, I guess welcome to my house. Right. Um, Same. That's where they like to hang out. Oh. And and most of the time, fortunately, the brown recluse spider bites are not fatal. Oh. So you just need to get to a doctor pretty oh, quickly. Oh, okay. But it he waited will, so long. Often, yeah, because, I mean, he waited a full, he went home, he had that screaming, terrifying nap for yeah. two hours, and then his friend finally got him. But most of the time, it ends up in amputating an arm or oh, whatever, and not wow. necessarily in death. Whereas a black widow uh-huh. will cause death. Oh. Like, it is a different, it attacks the body in kind of a different way. Interesting. So. Man, I like spiders, though. I think they're really helpful for. They're wonderful like, uh, for the environment. They yeah. get rid of crazy pests. You know, I know if you see them in the garden, you should yeah. just let them go because they'll eat all the little crap that you don't want yeah. all over your plants and. But man, they scare the shit out of me. At the Saturday market, there was a tarantula guy, and I got to pet the tarantula. I want to murder you. I wish very... I had never heard that story. <laughs> I have a video. Um, no. I'll not see that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just... Ugh. No, thank you. You know how Indiana Jones feels about snakes? Yeah. That's how Michelle Pretty feels about spiders. Okay. That's they just same with snakes. But I also know that if you kill a spider inside, it's supposed to be bad luck. So, which is the reason why I didn't initially kill that giant spider in the first oh, place. I, I put figured, him outside when I can. Yeah. I don't. You would have seen this and been like, bitch, I don't know what to do. You probably. should probably burn your house to the ground. Oh. Yeah, and wow. it's that close. Really? And I still am that close because who knows where it's gone? I don't think you understand how big this spider Could was. Maybe like a wolf spider? Like probably. A... Actually, I should try to find out what kind of spider it was. Are you showing me a picture or not? This is. Oh. oh my God. Sorry. I, want... I know. We're how like... big do they get? Oh. Yeah, they're pretty pale looking and scary. Yeah, they look pretty gross. No, the one that was in our room was black and like furry i that probably is a wolf spider then black spiders in oregon black hairy spiders not black widow nope not like that it was there we go it was like that one which one what's is that? lurking in your home or garden spiders of oregon yeah what do, it doesn't even say what it is show all images hard pass black widow we had black widows growing up Gross. there was a uh, certain little there was like a playhouse on our property mm-hmm. for kids you know and i was like super excited to go into it and yeah my dad was like you are never allowed in that because there's black widows oh. all through it and so we were it was this like little i don't know a like, little playhouse that we were just never allowed to go into hmm. crazy well i will try to figure out what kind of spider it was okay. all i know is black and terrifying all right that's fair and the scariest thing yeah it's probably not even Oh, it's probably this giant house spider that's not venomous. Yeah, a house spider. That sounds... A giant house spider. Yeah, do you see how big that motherfucker looks? Yeah. Whatever, I can tell by your... (laughs) It's just a... Like, it's just a poster of a bunch of different... (laughs) It's scary. Oh, my gosh. You don't know, Caitlin. Okay. If it ever shows its face again, I'll take a picture before I kill it. We can post it online to see if people know what it is. Yeah. Like, bitch, that ain't nothing. Yeah. That no brown recluse. Well, no. Thank goodness. No, thank goodness. Uh, oh, anyway, but I felt like I had to share a no, spider that's, bite story. Well, that's, 
that's intense. I mean, pe- that is, is something that's common that, I mean, that could happen. I guess they're all over the Midwest, which I did not realize. I did not realize that I either. thought they were all over Oregon, but they're not. Yeah, I thought they were in Oregon, too. No, what was, I thought we saw a brown recluse at work once, no? Well, didn't someone Apparently say that? Apparently not. Apparently we did not. Well, fucking lied. <laughs> so. Know. Um, you didn't almost die there. Yeah. Not for that reason, anyway. Yeah. And the unused books. Just. Oh God. Whoa, whoa. All right. I caught a snake there once. In the stacks of in books? The, yeah. In the stacks of books. It was slithering around and no one else would catch it. And so, so I. So you're not scared of snakes, just spiders? No, I am scared of snakes. Oh. It took a lot, like a fortitude. But, but you were was, the manager, so I you was had to the suck manager, it up. And there was like 50 people, like, there's a snake over there. And I was like, well, I got to do what I got to do. And so I took a formed box uh-huh. and i set it on the ground and then i went behind it uh-huh. and sort of ushered it into the box and oh it went into the box and i took it out and i threw it out into the parking lot all right so saved everyone good job thank you michelle Fuck her little garden snake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it probably was totally a little garden snake all right um well i'm happy he survived and he got to keep his arm my and gosh he got to keep his arm surprisingly yeah i mean it sounded like he really did need to let Get it go it. yeah Ugh. I would. I mean, if it's life or death, like, yeah, chop it all off. Well, and again, again he, his fever, he realized yeah. later, like, yeah, I would have definitely, yeah, definitely been okay with letting it go rather right. than dying. Um, but yeah, but with his state, yeah. Oh Ugh. my goodness. Scary. All right. Well, uh, great stories. Uh, surprisingly good drink. I was surprised about myself that I enjoyed it, but... <laughs> Maybe I like Bloody Marys now, you know? Uh, hashtag disagree, because that shit, you've got a third of it left in the glass. I'll drink it. I'm it's on, a like, sipper. My I feel like it's like a meal, man. It's like it it's like thick. That's so. all you need to order on Sunday brunch. Yeah. It's just that Bloody Mary. Yeah, because it comes with a lot of shit, too. So, <laughs> all right. So, we hope you enjoyed this episode, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Go try that vodka. Yeah, tell us what you think of that goddamn Arby's vodka. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs>